Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talks. Today we have ISTP and INTP first INTJ, and I'll have everyone introduce themselves. And so Dominic, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Dominic, I'm 29 years old, I'm an ISTP, and I'm from Germany. Cool, and Benjamin? Yeah, I've got a different age and I'm from uh, Canada originally. <laughs> um, awesome. My name is Benjamin, I'm ISTP, keep going. Great. And Josh? Yep. My name is Josh. I go by Vazaroth Online. Uh, I'm an INTP. I'm 31 and I'm in the US. So. Excellent. And Stacey? Uh, I'm 28. I'm an INTP from the United States. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I try to clear up misconceptions about typology and help people figure out their type with affordable typing services. Cool. And Michael? Yeah, I'm Michael. Um, I'm 75 years old based on my battles with technology over the last five minutes, but it seems like everything is working fine and I, I feel good. Excellent. And Lydro? My name is Lindsay um, and I have a YouTube channel, Typology. So, yep. Uh, my name is Holly. I live in Texas. I'm 52 and I work in IT and I have a YouTube channel called um, Beyond Sustainable Living. I'm Chris. I run the YouTube channel as Sarah Psych. I'm a certified MBTI practitioner and a graduate student of psychology. Hi, my name is Joyce, and I'm a certified MBTI practitioner, and I facilitate the instrument and organizations, and I type and coach people. And everyone, go check out Azura Psych, Lijo on YouTube, and Spacey as well, and Benjamin. They are amazing YouTubers, and, well, there's a lot of YouTubers, Michael and Vazaroth. So everyone, go check out Holly, Lijo, Chris, Michael, Spacey, Josh, Benjamin on YouTube. They have amazing content. <laughs> yeah. The topic for today, TI DOMs versus INTJs. So ISTPs and INTPs, have you ever, when you took a test, received an INTJ result or a TJ result? Yeah, yeah I, I did, yeah. When I was younger, especially, I would used to get INTJ pretty much all the time. Um, yes, me too. Um... I I still uh, type as an INTJ, but I'm pretty sure that I'm ISTP. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're an ISTP too. So as you can see here, a lot of TI DOMs score INTJ on the test. And so today we will clarify the differences between these three types. Yeah. <laughs> and so to start off, differences between introverted thinking and extroverted thinking. INTPs and ISTPs, what was the selling point where you knew you weren't an INTJ? So for me, um, I was pretty sure I was an INTJ, like I said, when I was like maybe 15 through 18. And then sort of as I developed, I realized that like basically all the stereotypes of INTJs I was reading about didn't really apply to me. Like I wasn't like very uh, decision oriented. Um, I was more speculative and like willing to just kind of meander my way through concepts and things like that. When I got started getting into cognitive functions, like in my 20s, that really like pretty quickly differentiated it for me. I was like, there's no way I'm an INTJ. I know I'm not doing this NI, uh, TE stuff especially. So that was the, the big selling point for me, the big turning point. Yeah. So with INTJs, they have TE. So they're going to be decisive when ordering things in the outer world, whereas INTPs will have less of that in general. Anyone else? Yes. I think um, for me, the most important thing was that uh, I don't plan as much ahead as they do. Um, I like to enjoy the moment and not to plan so much. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I mean, at some point early in my typology adventures, I quickly discovered that I just had like a total lack of the like certainty about, about things that the, the, INTJs in my life seem to display, even if I didn't know that's what they were yet. Um, just lack of focus or, or clarity or ability to, to commit to things, I guess. That's actually pretty much what I was kind of talking about too, because I, I told, told, told Joyce before I had an INTJ like best friend and like he would take the test, get the same result. And I was like, I'm not like him at all. He's very like, has his mind made up about a lot of things and I have to really like work my way through it. So. 
Yeah. So it seems to be a JP difference that was like the biggest indicator that you weren't a an INTJ. You had a hard time committing to things, and you didn't really plan long term as much as a judger would in general. Even before I knew what that meant, yeah, for me. Yeah. It's a little bit strange that the uh, INTPs type as an INTJ because they don't share even one function, right? Like the ISTPs. It's a little bit strange. Well, when I got into socionics, that was when the lines were blurred the most, I guess, because you're, you're introduced to a bunch of other concepts, like the fact that both INTJs and INTPs have 4D, uh, TI, and NI. So it's something that they can both do uh, quite well, like functionally speaking. Um, but it's kind of a matter of what you pay the most attention to or where you tend to sit in your default state. I feel like there's kind of like some social pressure to be more J-like, so it's like kind of easier to accidentally type as J than P. Mm -hmm. And so INTJs, have you ever met someone who mistyped themselves as INTJ, but they're actually a TI DOM? How did you know they were a TI DOM? I've had a few in like my typing sessions, uh, less so in my personal life, but I I've certainly met INTPs who have like motivations in life, who think that they portray the characteristics usually associated with being like an extrovert or judging type. Um, specifically, like if they're in their like late 20s, early 30s, and they've kind of finally figured out what they want to be doing, it's much easier for them, I think, to mistype as an IJ um, if they develop those types of behaviors and traits. Yeah. I've also, through my typing service, met a few TI DOMs who initially thought maybe they could be INTJ. That was like a possibility they had. Yeah. Yeah, I think the same thing. Like, I've known a few people who even though they're just sharing T, like in general, they'll kind of associate it with TE um, instead of it being TI. And so I think, you know, if you're if you're exuding a lot of just a thinking function in general, sometimes that fine line of where is this thinking function integrating, like is it integrating in the external world or is it integrating with my own world? It can be a little bit harder to see the difference between, but yeah. I also think when you first start looking into this and exploring it, then you're you're sort of stuck with the stereotype. So um, I, I think there's a lot of that as a result, a lot of that kind of mistyping. I see with ISTPs too, because if, if, if the stereotype is, you know, the mechanic or, or whatever it is, then I think there, there's, you know, some confusion or resistance to, to accept the type before you understand the nuances of functions and, you know, all of the ins and outs of various systems. Yeah, good points, everyone. And so Josh mentioned an, an interesting point at the beginning, like the decisiveness of INTJs. Because INTJs have TE, they're less scattered when making external world decisions. That's when like you lead with TE in the outer world. It's going to have more logical order with how you deal with your surroundings in, in a kind of, I don't know. So TE is more looking at like external world metrics at like the the pass and fail at which an action can take you if we're going to take the judging functions and sort of reduce them to binaries i think it does make sense in, in clarifying things so yeah i think of i think of extroverted thinking as more um pass fail or success failure outcomes oriented and ti i generally think of as just as as more of a true false switch yeah. Same way that FI is kind of like a good bad switch. Again, it's reductive, but I don't know what FE would be. I know we're not talking about it right now, but I'm just thinking friend yeah. enemy. I don't know. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, th that's a really well put, Michael. So I had a talk with an INFP friend last night, and we kind of talked about how introverted functions they they have a more structural structuralist approach to things, while as extroverted functions have a more Functional, functionalist, functionalist approach. <laughs> yeah, functionalist like approach. End result, pretty much. Yeah, introverted functions like TI, they're kind of about relating things to each other. So, like relating thoughts to thoughts and checking for the consist consistency within thoughts. So it's it's kind of like when they talk about that TI framework, it's this like structuralist approach to logic. The extroverted functions are always l looking outside of the function itself. The function itself doesn't want to reflect on what the function is doing, whereas the introverted functions want to look at their own function and reflect on what their own function is doing. Yeah. yeah. 
when TE is taking like a functionalist approach to logic, it's kind of like looking at the the cause and effect in the outer world of logical things. It's looking at the causal relationship between things. Like TE is more concerned with the outer world causal relationship of things. And that's why it cares about efficacy and efficiency because it's able to understand the causal relationships and, and then they know how to make it flow in the best way because of that. Yeah. Whereas TI is, is more about understanding thought structure and it's kind of like a com comparing those thoughts to, to get to the most accurate way of understanding something. And kind of like what you're saying with um, the introverted functions willing to kind of like check their own work, I guess, like that's how I view my TI as well. Like I frequently like have a thought and then like another, where's my camera, like a thought and another thought and they'll like kind of clash and then like come up with something. And that's actually like yeah. dialectics is like, I found out there's a word for that, but I've been doing that like my whole life pretty much like inherently with TI, I'm pretty sure. So. So that might link back to as well to where the confusion is coming from, because we're all here leading with an introverted function. So we're all kind of doing that first. Yeah, and that's, I was actually going to say that's another thing that I think is interesting about the, like at least INTP and ISTP uh, versus INTJ is like, we're both uh, kind of known as thinker types, but only the TI people are actually dominant thinker types, right? I don't, I don't I'm kind of curious, like how that like affects the way we sort of change our cognition, I guess. Yeah. What's the difference between being a dominant thinker versus being a dominant perceiver? Well, my TE is in service of my NI. I'm not basing everything off of my thinking. My thinking serves a, a greater purpose. I mean, from my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I guess when we were talking about TE, it's more like what you show to the world rather than what dominates your mind. So it's like what people see first, but not exactly what makes you up as a whole. It's the, fun yeah. it's the practicality. Yeah, that's interesting for me because, like I said, I don't have TE, so I'm always kind of kind of trying to figure out what that would be like to have TE, and it's that's like not really how my brain works at all. Like it's my everything kind of funnels into my like structures and thought process. Like in the end, one thing I've noticed with the auxiliary thinking types is that they almost tend to treat information and thinking um, like this tool that they're just gonna like like they're gonna approach the information and disrespect it almost they're gonna rip the pieces that they want out of it to use it in the way that they want i describe my thinking as like this frankenstein's monster of things that i need from different sources of information and i'm using them as efficiently and as quickly as possible i don't care if they're a hundred percent accurate or representative of the information itself as long as it fulfills the purpose that i need it to fulfill in the role that i'm attempting to use it in and i like i'll say that with when it comes to disrespecting information, like I've got a huge bookshelf behind me and I've read like five chapters out of each of the books, but I haven't finished any of them. And it's because I'm only using the information that I need from within that specific book. That's how I use my thinking at least. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a heresy to TI Doms is like, because it's I feel the heresy. exact same way. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll take, I mean, I don't, it's funny because I remember um, back in school when I would try to take notes, I'd feel like the, the, the correct way to do it would be to follow the logic of whatever I was reading and take the proper notes so that I could trace that thread back when I reviewed the notes. And eventually I started taking notes that were just my ideas, just, just bald faced misinterpretations of what I was reading. I mean, this is a little, hyperbolic but like I, I agree with chris that it's not it's not on my radar as something that like um yeah that it's any sort of heresy to misread you know hegel or something give me what yeah like like josh when you brought up dialectics you know it's 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 like you can you can spend a lot of time following that thread through various like schools of thought or you can take the general idea of um uh, you know ideas being in conflict with themselves and certain like forms of resolution that come through that and take that one piece. And, you know, whenever I apply that, I'm completely misinterpreting whoever it is, Hegel, Marx, whoever, Adorno, whoever talks dialectics, but it's, it's just, there's some kernel of it that I need that right now. I'm trying to pull this, whatever it is together, even if it's an idea, I need that right now. And everything else is just, I had no problem pushing that to the side. There's no paying of conscience there, I guess. Yeah, TE tends to collect relevant information, relevant to what the task is, whereas TI is more thorough. Yeah, uh, the only thing is, um, I know exactly what y'all are talking about with the TE being more rushed. We just wanna get to 
whatever we need to accomplish the goal. But I find I get in different modes and sometimes I do get in a TE mode where I, I really do feel like I, I'm not doing it justice and it bothers me if I don't really go thoroughly into, into the topic. So I will be more polite, like I'll take notes and I, I feel like I am more thorough, but maybe that's just different levels of T, TJ or age group or something, or maybe the career choice can make you more that way. I think to I like Ho Holly, I think some of that might be some of your like NI in there as well working because it's like, you know, NI is going to look for the missing sensory information that's being left out of the equation so that TE can go and do the work to actually like make, make the thing work, whatever it is. And so we'll kind of, you know, if we're kind of stuck in a spot where we're like, we know that this, the pieces that need to be aligned, there's not enough of the alignment to actually let TE go. We'll take that time to be like, okay, what else do we need to do to get some extra sensory in here to make this thing had the path correct. And then um, the, w the way I see TE kind of then take the ball after NI is done with it, is that like, okay, its job is to make the thing work, um, however that is. And it's kind of like this uh, roll of duct tape and like handful of zip ties. Cause it's like, whatever we need to do to get the thing to work, like we'll do. If we have to like patch it together, if we have to, you know, Bring, bring two other pieces. And sometimes it is kind of like everyone's alluding to kind of messy or kind of, um, you know, not sensorily proper, but also let's do the NI. But uh, it's, we're not taking it personally, like the craftsmanship of how, like how the thing is working. We just want to get it so that it does work. And then NI can continue on its trajectory forward. I still think I'm a little bit more careful when i was younger i definitely was like you what y'all are saying but i feel like it's it's changed over the years i just it's almost like a for, for me it's almost like a an ethical thing not ethical a morality thing like i feel like i have to do justice to what i'm trying to learn so because i don't want to miss anything that could be a, a nugget that would be important that i didn't realize i was missing if i didn't be thorough yeah, yeah. So the lesson here is that introverted functions are the ones that are thorough. So if you're being thorough, it's it's an introverted function at work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like with INTJs, like the NI kind of drives that is sort of what you're saying, Holly, is the way I'm taking it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I noticed, yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah. also getting confused here a little bit between l learning something meticulously and between trying to get something to work. And I think Holly is taking the time to learn something meticulously and maybe you're not using your TE in that instance? Yeah, I was going to say it's it's yeah. it's real obvious to me when it's I because I can feel the shift inside me when I'm doing TE because TE is tends to be a little bit more rushed and I got to get this done. And uh, the, the learning, I'll really just spend a lot of time on that part. So, yeah, I think you're right about um, the learning versus the you know, accomplishment goal. Yeah. And what? Benjamin just did right now, it, it could be seen as TI clean slicing data. So he, he's like seeing the messiness of the logic and he's going like, okay, you're you're mixing up what works with with studying and, and meticulously absorbing information. So I was, was gonna say too on what uh, Chris said earlier, Michael said, it sounds like it's kind of heresy and it's, and it's, yeah, it feels like taking a cell phone and hitting a nail. It's like, okay, it works, you're right. But I mean, is that really the best thing to do? <laughs> yeah. You got to get that nail on the wall. What do I, <laughs> you know what I mean? What about knowledge for knowledge sake? Because I feel like, I think that's a point of confusion, maybe, because I, I feel like INTJs love what, well, I think it looks like knowledge for knowledge sake. I do like uh, gaining knowledge for its own sake, but at the same time, the reason I'm doing that is because maybe I'll need that and I know where to look for it when I do. But if you ask me out of context about, you know, some piece of that. And it, it's not, it, it's, it, I have nowhere to apply it or ha I haven't applied it anywhere. It's just, it's just not there. It's just a matter of, for me, I know where to find it when I need it. I know it's there, but it's that, that's what I'm very actually envious of with the TI DOMs. They have this web of information and of logic, you know, and all those connections are there. And I feel like I don't have that random access to that, except for, so, and this, this goes to perceiving too, I need it at some point and it's suddenly there. I know, I know where to go to get it.
Yeah, and this goes back to the beginning of the chat when we talked about functional. So TE is looking for function, and if it's not applicable, if it's not like you cannot apply it to the real world, it's like it, it'll prioritize that and let that less, if that makes sense. Kind of what you're talking about, Michael. I'm I'm interested to know if this is maybe me misunderstanding any or something, but for me, the way I view my TI is like I I do like knowledge for knowledge's sake. Like I can just browse Wikipedia for like hours if I want to sometime. Um, I kind of have, I think this might be why I originally tested INTJ because I have that idea of like, oh, I might need this in the future. But mm -hmm. I have, as I've grown up, because I'm 30 now, so I've had a good amount of time to think about this, I realized I don't actually need a lot of the stuff that I think I'll need. I don't really put a lot of effort into thinking about the practicality of that. It's just kind of like a thing in the back of my mind. I hope I'll need this someday. And then if I do end up needing it, I find I have to kind of like start it square one with a concept and then build up from there to like see where I'm going with it. And it's not just like available on demand, like you're saying. As a kind of like TE mirror to that, um, I almost have like a, a different issue. Like for example, I never took chemistry in high school or college. And I keep telling myself, man, I really just want to go and take like an online course for chemistry. And I've been saying that for two years and I, I don't think I'm ever going to get around to it. And it's because it's like, am I really going to use that? Like as someone who's a psychology major, am I ever going to need chemistry? But it's something that I keep telling myself, oh, that'd be super interesting to learn. And then I never get around to actually starting it or even beginning to learn it. Yeah, the INTJ is like, can I use this? What's the point of learning this? <laughs> I never think that. I think that's the total key right there. We want it, but we just are forced to find the reason, the justification for having the knowledge. We want it, though. I feel like we want that knowledge. It's interesting and fun to learn, but we have to justify it. How are we going to use it? Yeah, you, you need a purpose for it, um, I think. And the purpose for the IPs is just the understanding itself. So mm -hmm. we don't need to achieve something with it. That's right. Priority number one is just understanding. Perfect. Yeah, so it doesn't need TE utility, basically. Mm -hmm. And like uh, what Azura said with the chemistry, I so back in the day, I had kind of that same perspective. I was, I always, I, like, I took chemistry in school and I liked it and same thing with biology. But then like a few years later out of school, I like, I somehow got into um, like analyzing blood and like understanding how like nutrients work in blood and um, more into like the biology side of um, nutrient biochemistry, just because I started to see how it could integrate and like actually change mechanisms in your own body for the better or for the worse and how all those components work together to make these very, you know, all these processes we just take for granted actually make them work. And so I became, that was like my usefulness for wanting to go and dive deeper in it. And so I went, you know, deep down that hole for, for a few years to learn more and more about it. But yeah, it's like, if I hadn't have seen that connection of like why this is useful to know, then I would have never gone down there. But then once I saw it and I was like, oh, of course, we're gonna go down this for as long as we possibly can. <laughs> I identify with that too. I'm sure we all do is like, if there is a purpose for it, then we'll learn even more and go even deeper than we normally would. It's just kind of prioritizes you know. it. Yeah. 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 It's, I was going to say uh, what you were saying there, uh, Lee Joe, you said like you kind of needed the purpose to be able to like motivate yourself to kind of get through it is what it sounds like to me. And I've noticed that like, I'll dip my toe in like a hundred different things. Oh. That's probably any at that point. But then, um, you know, I'll kind of see whichever one just like seems to appeal to me or like which one I think would be interesting or more importantly, which one would like complete a framework of something else like that might be more applicable to other thoughts and structures that I have. And that's really what drives me to like go deeper on something. And then if I'm kind of at the point where like I have to almost do like a TE approach where I have to learn something for like work, um, I, I, it, it kind of makes me annoyed, but I'll do it. <laughs> I can tell that there's a use for it. It's like, okay, I, I'll power through this. I know I have to do it, but I'd rather just like learn for like no reason and then try to find a use for it later, I guess, is sort of how I operate. There's a lot of things that I don't ever find a use for. Yeah, with the INTPs, they show their NE to the world. So you'll see this in the form of them exploring these like multiple different pathways, like Josh was mentioning. Well, we're driven by curiosity and we don't know how we feel about things until we actually experience them. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Can I add here too that I think is something that tends to or can tend to muddy the waters. And I think it's good that we're drawing the distinction between the judging and perceiving functions is 
as perceiving doms, as introverted intuitives, I feel like we do have a tendency to ask very broad questions like, you know, what is reality? <laughs> what is truth? You know what I mean? So that like, that leads to a lot of exploration that leads you sort of all over the place. So I, I feel like, at least for me, there, there are overarching kind of questions that, that justify a kind of, you know, going all over the place to, to try to, you know, to have a, a sense of the lay of the land, you know? But I don't know with, I'd be interested to know between the ISDPs and the INTPs, like, do those, do those, and with the INTJs too, those, like, do, do, do those questions tend to bother you? <laughs> like, or is it, do, it, does the question come first or is it you're building up from the, from the ground level instead? Mine is always ground level for sure. The question comes first for me. Yeah. TI is often described as building logic from the ground up. Yeah, that's that's exactly sort of how I see it too. And it's that that's why I say like I try to like dip my toe in a lot of things because I feel like I have like holes in sort of like my logical frameworks for various things, but I'm never sure what goes in that hole until I just kind of see it. I'll know when I see it. Um and that's why I just like find myself like picking up everything I can and then kind of figuring out where it goes later, like gather gather everything now and sort it out when it's relevant. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're you're dead on with that. The the question is where there's a hole. So there's a hole in our logic here. That's when we'll ask the question. Well, and also with the INTJ, we have um, the sixth function is TI. So I think we we can do TI. We can dip in and out of that. And I don't know for you guys, it's TI is your dominant, and so you're probably less likely to jump down into TE. You know, because it's you're so into TI. Whereas for us, it's in the middle, so we can kind of I guess shift, shift back and forth a little bit more, maybe. I think um, in a work situation, for example, you won't see a difference between TI and TE because then someone sets uh, the purpose and then I would just uh, take the most efficient or shortest route to get to the purpose. But uh, in my free time, I, I won't do that. So. Yeah, I think it's it's difficult to to see it from the outside if someone's the I or TE in yeah. situations like work or or something like that. At least with introverts, yeah. I think the STPs in general as well, maybe even more compared to the NTPs, are gonna have that thing where maybe they feel like they're engaging in more of like a TE type of activity because SE can be a lot more hands on how they like interact with things. So maybe they get that TI information and then they act on it. They, they go out and do something with it instead of playing around with it just conceptually. And that can, especially in, like you said, like a work environment that can come off as being very similar to extroverted thinking, I think. One big thing I mean, I've noticed with TI users is, and this is kind of what we've said, but it, to me, this is like a real obvious way to tell INTJs apart from TI DOMs is you guys are always refining what other people say kind of catching, finding, like you said, finding the holes in the logic. And um, so that's kind of what the conversations pretty much always consist of for the most part is just refining what you said, catching the mistakes and trying to correct them. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I end up kind of interfacing with TE people at work pretty often, people I'm fairly sure are TE people. And then one thing I've noticed, because um, I worked from home even before pandemic and everything, but the one thing I've noticed is like if I'm on a call with someone and they want to like figure something out on the call, it's very uncomfortable for me. Um, I kind of need time to like go back into my like corner and like figure out where everything connects. Um, and I find that like I can be pushed into like using TE to like relate to those people. And I feel like I kind of know what they're looking for, but um, I don't like to do it. <laughs> I would prefer much more to just kind of go off and figure it out myself. Yeah. The thing so... is from a work environment uh, perspective, I've noticed that like, usually I see that there's like one best way to do something and then everyone, and then the TE is just like, no, let's just do it like this or like this. Or it's like, if they all work, there's still one best way. Why aren't we doing the best way? Why are we doing all of these other weird ones? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm getting out of this is that if you notice someone's like a thinker and, but they're at work, they, they might seem more TE than they m actually are. Cause when I talk to Spacey, Josh, Dominic, um, they've mentioned how in the work environment, they can seem like they're, temporarily using TE for a moment, but they're actually TI. Hmm. 
I feel yeah. like with with TI, I like efficiency, but it's not like a the main driving factor. If that makes sense, it's something that I like kind of think of. But like, if there's something more fun or like something that's just for myself or something like some kind of F related thing, then I'll just like be like, ah, I know it's inefficient, but I like it this other way. Yeah. Like it's it's the way I see TI is it's always like I have to like do a little check mark on everything inside my head to make sure that like it appeals to me. It's almost like an FI function, which is always weird to me. Um, and like I, you know, if it doesn't fit into a structure and if I can't like do that little check mark, I always have a flag on it. I, I call that my any flag, but that says like, uh, this might not be real. <laughs> like this might not work for you. It has to fit into a structure before I'll kind of claim it. I do think TI values efficiency, but I think it's a different sort of word, like a different in interpretation of the word efficiency. Yeah. Because uh, like efficiency is just get it to work now and then be done. That that could be one way of being efficient, and then you don't ever have to do talk, talk about it again or think about it again. But then the other kind of efficient is like let's get it to be done so that we don't ever have to do it again. And I think that's more what TI is looking at. It's like what's the real and the right solution forever sort of thing. And that'll take time to figure out. Mm. So it's a perfectionist. It's trying to find that perfect solution. I, I guess. Think, yeah. I think uh, INTJs do some of that. Well, I'm sure not to the extent, but I feel like whenever I'm trying to find a solution, I can't stand finding a quick solution. I want to find the one that's going to work long term. Maybe that's the NI coming in again. I feel like all of our like two functions here really work with their N. I don't know about the STPs, but like the N really influences, I feel like, what we're doing with our T. Is it possible that there's this is a bit of an NI thing? Like, do, do ISTPs consider, do they want something to work for a really long time? and never have to touch it again? Or are they more uh, momentary? I think it depends on the on the subject. I think um... <laughs> you just have to blow it up with the SE. It depends. I was say that's SE, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah some, something uh, fundamental. I would say I want it uh, to work uh, long term. But um, I also can be uh, very, very, very lazy if it comes to trivial things. So, um, yeah, I think um, you you asked the question about uh, T T E in in free time, um, and I think um, efficiency is is a, is a relation of output to effort. So you always have to uh, consider what is the output you want to have. And I think that the IPs just don't uh, want the output that the others want. So yeah, exactly, Dominic. I was going to say like that's that, the way I view efficiency, and that's something I've detected is kind of with TE, TI possibly, is TI is willing to move the goalposts closer and closer to like being done, whereas TE wants to move the progress bar like quicker. <laughs> that makes sense. Like they don't they want the the end result to be good. I feel like. IPs are a little more willing to like do a shoddy job, but if it's faster, that's better. At least that's how I've always like seen it. I've gotten in trouble for that a lot in parents and stuff like that, like not mowing the lawn correctly. But like I was like, oh, you can't tell I didn't do it right, right? Well, I'm willing to kind of break the rules, I guess, with TI. I always felt like for me, it's more of a function of just energy expended for yeah. for yeah for the result that you get, and that's possibly part of why we consider the long term and we're like, well, if I have to come back and do it again, right, am I really saving myself effort? So I think that's where that comes in for us IPs, at least. I, I see that as uh, my SI like failing a, a hundred times and then figuring it out. And then I finally know it's like, okay, exactly. here's, where I'll, here's where I'll set the parameters for first stoppage or like right. what's what's a success. Uh, but I guess we kind of have to have stuff fall apart on us first, right? And then be like, all right, you know, I should have, I should have bought the name brand whatever you know <laughs> literally i just said that to my wife yesterday i was like yeah i bought the uh this off-brand like cheese once don't do that it tasted like plastic i'm going to make sure to spend the extra dollar and get the other one because i tried and failed for me yeah. efficiency is always in relation to the amount of time that i need it to work so um I, I don't know if this is like opposite to how a ti person might do it but if i only need it to work and for 10 minutes i'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for the perfect solution if I need it to work for you know 12 days, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time trying to do that. And there's gonna be differences in that. I don't feel like I need to have the perfect solution. It just needs to be good enough to meet the requirements that I have for the amount of time that I need it to work. And for the job at hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that a couple of times from TE users that they're looking for to meet the requirements. It's all about the requirements and meeting the requirements. 
Yeah, and that point about energy expenditure too, I think that Spacey brings up is important for us too, because if I I want something to, if I'm building something, I want it to run itself if at all possible. And I always like in the process of putting that together, it's like, okay, how much maintenance is this going to need? However far into the future, like I built, um, for work, I built a database to to make a certain process more efficient. And there was a suggestion to overlay another database on top of it and link the two together. It would have made for a better system, but it would also mean that I have to deal with a lot more administrative responsibilities. And I said, okay, this is this is a sort of stopgap solution. It's gonna be at most two years that this thing's gonna exist. The the payoff for inefficiency is not worth the extra burden in the amount of maintenance it's, that's going to be required from here to then. If it was a permanent solution, uh, then it, it would have been a different conversation. But at that point, I was like, okay, this is this is good enough for right now. No, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a contextual property to TE, just like other extroverted functions have a contextual property because it's like, what is the job at hand? How much do you need to know to get this job at hand done? So it, it, it's kind of like everyone was saying, getting the requirements of that moment because it, there's a it, it's it's more in tune with the context of, of the moment than TI generally is. Yeah, I, I had a TE boss and one of the things I would always tell him, ask him is, do you want it done right or do you want it done fast? Because he would always badger me and be like, Get it, is it done yet? Is it? Do you want it done right or fast? What do you want? I say that at work a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> Both. I worked for an ESTJ for six years, and he wanted it done right and fast. And it was most, like it was like you can't do both. You have to pick one. You know, <laughs> you're not gonna get that all the time. Mm -hmm. Chris, what would you pick? I mean, just I mean, it's broad, but like, what? It depends how much he was gonna be watching me. <laughs> if he wasn't watching, I'd go for fast. But if he was going to be looming over my shoulder, I would do it the way I had to do it. You know? <laughs> That's funny. That's interesting. So we talked a bit in this chat about corrections. And I know TI is known as being a no machine because like when it spots an, like an inconsistency with it, your logic, it'll kind of point it out. But uh, both TI and TE have a reputation for correcting people actually, but they do it for different reasons and they, they do it differently. So I'm wondering what are your experiences with possibly correcting or telling someone a new way of thinking or doing something and when, when have those situations been and when do you correct people basically? Yeah, that's a good point. And you're right. I have noticed that for me, I correct, I try not to correct any much anymore, but I used to be bad about that, but it would always be based off of if I think somebody's incorrectness is going to hinder what we're trying to do, the practicality of it, or if it's going to inhibit someone learning, that's a big one. You know, it, either it, it's inhibiting something, either it's going to prevent someone from understanding better or accomplishing the task or the goal. That bugs me. I, I would say for myself, it's a lot of um, like, I can definitely be a, a dream killer when it comes to if someone's like, oh, I have this great idea for this thing. And Lindsay's always the one who's like, well, hold on, like, let's think about this. Did you think about like, if this happened, then this and this could happen. And then, you know, and then you would have to make sure this amount of people were involved because this would be the other thing. And so I know there's some NI in there as well, but a big piece of that is like how it integrates with the world. And so since that's what my brain is, you know, pinging to, I'm going to be, that's where I will correct. Um, it's not as it relates to like my personal like view on something in, in that introverted like DIY way, FI or TI, but it's really as it integrates to the world, I will very quickly stop the process because I want to make sure that again, the, the efficiency, but um, that those components aren't being, being taken care of. Then I've come to realize that sometimes people aren't always serious about you know this idea and that they actually want to do it. They're just kind of throwing out an idea. And so I've had to scale back on the, you know, slam me down the foot of like, that won't work. Cause sometimes it's not, they're not thinking about that or wanting that information. <laughs> I find that like, I tend to like jump in and like correct things for people when I feel like they aren't considering it from like a certain perspective. 
one of the things I tend to notice, especially as an NTJ um, in my typing sessions with clients, is that TI, especially dominant types, are far more likely to stop and ask for clarification or ask you to rephrase something so they can completely understand what it is that they're answering. Because they, they don't want to just kind of generalize that information and give you an answer. They really want to understand the question that they're attempting to, to answer. Context is yeah. everything, yeah. Chris, Chris is 100% right with that. Yeah, I think judges in general are, are better with generalizing, whereas perceivers, especially IPs, because they lead with an introverted judging function, what will happen is they, it's exactly what Chris said. It's like they'll, they, they cannot generalize. They, they want to know the specific question you're asking so they can answer it as as well as they can. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I feel like there's like there's like a hundred answers for everything. So like, which answer do you need right now? Is how I like approach that. And like, you could see the opposite, or at least I do with EJs, where I can have sessions that are done in thirty to forty minutes because they're completely willing to just completely generalize everything that you ask them, and give the the kind of clear cut direct answer. Ten thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, like, there's only a hundred and a percent. Just you know. <laughs> yeah. <Very Jay. laughs> yeah. <laughs> EJs they overgeneralize a lot and IPs they try to do the opposite of that like they try to tailor each response to the specific thing you're asking or like they're more less like the, the opposite of general I don't know specific I guess yeah That's they're nice. specific yeah or they, they need to see how it resonates with what they think or what they feel before answering. So it has to go through a self filter before they answer. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like there's two factors at play here. Um, in regards to your original point about how all T types tend to criticize, but maybe in different ways, it seems like the TE people are going to critique someone's process or basically how they're doing things. Or maybe in the case yeah, of the yeah. J, they'll easily project that into how are people going to do things? Um, TI seems to just kind of correct what people say, right? If, if it, if we think it's wrong, or I guess more specifically, if it doesn't match up with what we think that we know, then, you know, we have to clarify that we feel the need to clarify. And just like what Chris said, right, we're always going to ask for clarification from people. And we're also going to suspect that others perhaps haven't thought about things as much as we have, and that we need to clarify further for them which isn't necessarily like correcting them, but we feel like we have to expand on what they've said just to make sure that everyone fully understands. Yeah, yeah I, re I rarely feel like I'm correcting people. I just feel like I'm trying to get more information. And then sometimes that like, gets me in trouble because it like they perceive it as me correcting them. And then like in retrospect, I'm like, I guess I was. <laughs> I just like, mm -hmm. I thought I was trying to help, but I kind of like was like harping on, on like a logic of, of someone or something. Yeah, yeah, what you're talking about there is understanding their logic. You're trying to understand their logic. So you're yeah. asking questions to further clarify their logic, try to see things from their perspective before you go and judge something, I guess. Yeah. But what I was going to say is I noticed um, when I correct people, it's usually someone's going away with like a runaway train of logic. So like they make a perception and then they make a conclusion, like an interpretation on the perception, and then they interpret and they keep interpreting. And it's like, if one of those steps in that chain is off and then they just keep going down this bad dead end, like this bad direction, it's like, hey, wait, 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 you're you're going down the wrong way. Like you're gonna waste everyone's time. You're just gonna keep talking and come to a really bad conclusion because you're going the wrong way. Like, let's let's dial back. Here's what, Here's probably something that you didn't get right and let's start going the right way from there sort of thing. So either the perception was wrong and let's fix the perception or one of their conclusions was wrong. Or... That's something I tend to notice when I talk with TI types. And as an NI dominant myself, a lot of the times when I want to discuss an idea or something, I don't actually care too much about whether or not it's right or wrong or like the, the logical correctness of it. I'm there to discuss just the idea and I'm not attached to it. Like it's just, I'm just throwing out theory and seeing if I can make some sort of conclusion with it or if it's going to lead anywhere. And the TI types that I tend to interact will stop me at every step of the way if they see some little prone or some little error. And I'm like, well, I understand that you see this here, but if we follow it for a little longer, maybe we can see something that we weren't able to see if we're forced to stop at that step. Yeah, yeah actually, I, I was going to say, I have that problem a lot. I end up stopping people and like ask them a question and then they'll be like, I was literally about to tell you that. And it's like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, you can even see it in Benjamin's face when he's like, he notices something he doesn't agree with. <laughs> he'll he'll want to stop you in the middle of your sentence. He just, he holds himself back. <laughs> <laughs> and and so Dominic, your experience with criticism? Um, I think uh, I have to say it depends again, uh, because, um, you know, in, in situations where people can't choose to be around me, like work, for example, uh, I would um, consciously stop myself from uh, criticizing other people because they can't run away from me. But um, in situations when in, in my free time, I, I think I criticize people a lot. So that's uh, probably um, a little bit hard for other people. But um, yeah, I think it's just um, that if something is wrong in my opinion, then I will correct them. Or at least um, I changed my behavior a little bit. I, I try to ask questions so they notice themselves that they are wrong. So that's, yeah, but that's, that's the way I do it. Yeah, there's something really interesting here. So remember when we talked about, uh, so EJs tend to generalize and IPs tend to seek specificity with how they answer, right? And Dominic just did it, you know, when he said it depends. Sometimes with some IPs, you'll notice them say like the phrase, it depends a lot because they're like, well, depending on the, the situation, depending on what you're saying, then I would answer differently. And, and so while the judges in general tend to generalize their answers a little more, so they're less prone to saying that and starting their sentences like that. Yeah. I find that like INTJs tend to like actually correct more and like NI types also in my experience. And for me, like if I don't know the person super well and I don't know that like the correction is super welcome, I'll usually say things more like uh, to some degree, this is the case. I'll, I'll couch it sort of. Um, I'll, I'll be very hesitant to like fully jump in on that potential bad feeling of FE inferior and just allow like bad feelings to happen. I always, I, I always, I'm always gently pushing like corrections out there and then hoping that they take it. And then if, if they do, I'll, I'll latch on and give them more information at that point. But I don't like to actually just correct people really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is a hypothesis could be wrong. I'm just going to put it into there. So I wonder if with TE is generally a little more quick and, and willing to kind of correct if it sees a point of correction. Whereas with TI, it will try to add like a few modifiers and it because it comes with FE and it's going to go like, hey, you, and, and try to soften it. So you'll notice that with a TIFE, there, there's going to be a softening effect. Like they'll say it, but maybe they'll want to like really soften it after. <laughs> yes, I've totally noticed that too. That's a great point about the softening from the TI users. And I, that was a good example of how I just jumped in and corrected uh, Joyce with the 100% and didn't even think about it till afterwards that it might have been kind of blunt, but that's a good <laughs> example. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I think, I think you're right too, because it's very rare that something is completely wrong. It's like, usually it's just a little off and that's really what the TI wants to sort of correct. So even like my facial expressions that you, I feel so called out on is, is like, it, it, tr it triggers when something's not a hundred percent right. And it's like, okay, almost, you almost got it. That, 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 that's actually like the time as, as a TI dominant, I'll find that I am the most willing to like jump in and just like give that little nudge of correction. If it's someone's like super wrong, or I feel like I have to address the whole the whole structure, I'll be like, "This is I can't handle this unless they ask me." Really, I think for various reasons, the 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 uh, the Jays might just be honestly more certain of of when they're right about something, or maybe the kinds of things that they're correcting people about or whatever are way more practical things or whatever, where it's it's way more clear cut basically about what's working and what's not, or what's right or what's wrong. Whereas maybe we are we are a little bit more unsure of whether or not we're even right. So if we move to correct somebody, you know, it's it's more exposure kind of. I would agree with that. I yeah, I don't I I don't tend to. Uh, I try to be better at this, but I don't tend to qualify my declarative statements. It's like especially if it's in a context of, of like action of some sort, then I might not have grounds to 
say what I'm saying, but I'm going to say it very <laughs> bluntly. Like this is this is how this is this is what's uh, this is what's true in this case. And you know, it, it, it in the context of action, though. I mean, just when I'm sort of just moving around trying to you know have something that I'm trying to figure out that I'm a little more. Um, a little less uh, forceful about that, but I think I think in presenting to the world, I probably might assume I might seem more. And I assume in these interviews that I've done too, I've said things very <laughs> forcefully that maybe I don't believe. And yeah, you know, I'm I'm sure I've contradicted myself, God knows how many times on these uh, on these videos. Yeah. So TE, it's known for saying things very confidently even if it's like, it hasn't really completely checked it. Like it just has an air of confidence when it speaks. Well, to well, is more contemplative, the, the air is more contemplative because that's really what they're doing. And we've already decided. So that's why we're so sure. Cause we've decided it just, that comes across. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, I, cause if a T cause the INTJ can be contempl contemplative and in that moment, we're not going to be decisive or we're not going to come across as decisive. So the only place I think that this would kind of be flipped is that if you hit a TI with something that's in their funnel of TI and it's already been so deep in its processing of knowing that TI and if you hit that one, they will certainly flip it back on you real quick because they're like, oh, I know on this thing without a shadow of a doubt that I am right. And so they'll, they'll flip it back real quick. So I think it's more the frequency. So TI would have a lesser frequency of um, flipping that correction to eat, we'll be doing it more often. Absolutely, 100%. When when TI has, it, it's one of their TI things where they've spent a long time thinking about it. They, they thought through every multifaceted way that this could be interpreted or thought of. They can have confidence with that specific thing that they've thought through. It's just with less frequency than TE is confident. TE is just generally confident with a lot of things. <laughs> I tend to notice that specifically the thinking dominant types are more willing to kind of die on the hill when it comes to defending the things that they're talking about and thinking. I have like an ENTG, ENTJ friend and an INTP friend, and they will go at it over the stupidest things for hours. Like they'll get into one topic arguments for hours and hours on end, and neither of them will change their mind because TE is so convinced and TI is so convinced. And either of them will argue with me. And after five minutes, I'm like, all right, like, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to die on this hill. You can argue about this for a while have time like i feel like we don't want to stop until we like have a very clear like understanding and like somewhere to put it like in our logical brain right that's probably what that, that's probably the reason that is yeah i have an entj dad and we do that a little bit i usually just let him win so thinking dominant types including entjs like if you kind of challenge like a piece of logic or a piece of the framework it's really um at least for me as a ti it really sets me off like it question, it like makes me question my whole reality. <laughs> um, like if there's something that I kind of just like thought was a uh, one of the very few like objective truths that I've kind of settled on, and then like something makes me question that, and I'm always looking to question everything. Um, it, it can really just like spin my whole day into complete chaos. So that's probably why like the TE versus TI doms clashing will just go at it like forever because we're both saying like no, we have to come up with something because we can't move on with our life until we figure out how to rebuild all the stuff that's been disrupted. As a Dominant function, it's almost like it's more of their identity, I think. It's almost more personal when they get into those kind of debates. And for me, when I get into like a logical debate or whatever, to me, since thinking is just a tool, you know, whatever, you know, I, I'm willing to discard it because I'm not going to take it personally if I'm wrong, unless it's something that's attached to the NI as well. But if it's just on that thinking level, I don't care if it's wrong. I can move on and find the next best thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, yeah, to me, thinking is not a tool. It's like my OS. Like if, if you change the OS, I'm going to have errors. Yeah, I think that was another heresy you just said there, Chris. Thinking is just a tool. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> two for two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> INTJ specialty seems like do that. <laughs> this is yeah. going to end with all the INTJs getting burned at the stake. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, I, I've had a lot of INTJ friends and I always appreciate that they will like poke at things that I think I've figured out, but then I, I they make me realize, oh, I don't actually know anything about this. So I always appreciate that kind of thing. That's true. Yeah. And so we were speaking about identity functions. So I'm wondering, how do the INTJs experience FI versus how the ITPs experience their TI? For me, FI is 
very important, but it's something that I don't like to show is important. And even there's times where I feel like I'm willing to sacrifice some of maybe the TE efficiency if it's going to betray the FI too much on like a core personal level. Um, like for example, when I, this is just like video games and I play fighting video games, I always pick the character I like the most. And I have an ENTJ friend who will always pick the character who's statistically the best, like the one that the pros use. And I can't find myself doing that because I have to like relate to the character on some level or I have to personally like them. And for me, it's important to have FI attachments to things exactly. if, I'm, if I'm going to employ the TE. And then once I have the FI attachment, then the TE is like, all right, we can full force go go and do this. But if there's no FI attachment, I'm not going to find myself able to employ that function. Yeah, there's a FI undercurrent to TE actions. Yeah, I don't anymore. Uh, as an adult, I don't pretty much do anything if my FI isn't on board, unless it's something I'm forced to do, like at work. But even then, I'll just fight it if my FI is not on board. Yeah, you just sort of force your way through at that point. I mean, I think uh, I'm curious with the TI DOMs. How like do you feel like you have strong opinions? It depends. It depends. Like right. bad, uh, for me, like I have strong opinions about kind of what um, what we were talking about earlier about like a narrow band of things. Like I have a bunch of like game books and stuff behind me. Like I can talk about like game design all day, and like I might say like, oh, this is like the right way to do something. This is the wrong way to do something. But like also, with TI, I'm again, I'm always willing to break a rule. So like I'm more interested in like a cool way to break a rule than the rules itself. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's maybe part of my like TI identity. I don't know. Well, I would say it's hard for me. I don't know how if I've said this before, but it's basically hard for me to decide whether or not I like something without an objective reason for liking it. Like I have to have a reason to prefer this thing over that thing. Because yeah, that's why sure. I, I probably agree with that. Yeah, that's a good key difference between FI and TI, right there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say something on getting your TI on board with something. So getting your TI on board with something. If my TI is not on board with something, wow, I will not do it. There's no way. It's uh, very true. There's, yeah. Like getting you to do something differently than the right way or like something that you think is not true. You'll just, you'll like, I'm doing this, but I don't agree. It's like, that's kind of, kind of what we're doing. Just jumping off of that. I mean, it's interesting that you say what is true because that's a whole other conversation, right? It's like, I assume this is where you get the clash between TI and FI. I think in society a lot is like, I assume that a phrase like, this is my truth would drive TI doms insane. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> that's true for me. I, I, I kind of hate that, but like, I also, I feel like TI and FI in a way are kind of trying to do the same thing in society. Um, just like from opposite sides, uh, like I, I understand the logic behind like that phrase, like live your truth or whatever, but in a way I feel like I do that, but I don't like thinking about it that way. I don't know. It just feels like kind of uncomfortable. I guess it's just too emotional, too, too FE for me or too FI maybe. Yeah. One, one of my favorite things to ask people on to kind of like differentiate like the TI access versus the FI access is, and no one really likes this question except for a few people, but um, is tell me something that you like with no reason behind why you like it. And then I'll always kind of give them a little, you know, I'm like, I know it's weird, but for instance, for myself, this took me a few days to figure out, but I realized that I liked AstroTurf and I don't really have any reason for it. I just think it's kind of cool, you know? And so like, that's something I just like without a reason. And it's funny because a lot of times the TI FE access, they're like, I have to have an internal reason they just like melt their faces on that question and they get angry because they're just like, I don't like this question, you know, how this is, how this is phrased. Um, and it's funny, then people who have TE over FI, it'll take them a few minutes usually, but then they'll usually give me an answer. And then the people who have FI on top, they'll just be like, well, I like this, I like this, I like this, I like this. And they'll just rattle them off and that like blows my mind as well. But it's funny how usually that TI FE access, they're like, the reason is so important that they're like, I can't just give you something that doesn't have a personal reason behind it. Yeah, interesting. And Dominic? Yes, I agree on that. Uh, even with things like music or so, I always have a reason for why I like it. So, and and I 
analyze things so I know why I like it. And um, on the other side, oftentimes, I don't know if I like something or not because I don't ask myself the question. For example, when people ask me, uh, how was your day or something like that, I can't answer that because I do not uh, think about it. So, every time yeah. they say, every time you guys say, I need a reason, I just default think of a value. I keep thinking, well, what is it that you feel about? I, I keep wanting to know what you mean by that. But when you say reason, it's not a judgment as far as the feeling goes, is it? It's just like, what do you mean exactly by your reasons? I mean, I think I know, but I'd like to hear more. I don't know. I, I analyze the music and think maybe of um, aspects of the music. And then I know, okay, I like the aspect of rhythm or melody or whatever. And then I know, okay, that kind of music, I, I like it because of that reason. So like the technical accuracy, maybe, for example? I think that can be part of it, right? That could be a reason. I'd say like one example for me, for example, is like uh, like blues chords on a guitar. Almost pretty, pretty much anything I hear that's got like blues chords with like a ton of distortion on it or something, right? I'll like it. And I know that's why that's why I like how it sounds, basically. Um, yeah, I think even if it's like we don't know why we like certain things, it's very important for like a T identity to find the smallest like component of something that we do like and then try to look for that in other things, like if that makes sense. I guess I'm um, just trying to find the nugget between the differentiation between the T and the, the F because it right. sounds like you're still getting to what you like but I'm not seeing a thinking reason necessarily, unless like we were saying it's technical proficiency or something. Yeah, I think there, there really is a certain point where it is just feeling like regardless of what type you are, like it probably introverted feeling more specifically even. Um, but it seems like the difference here is that we still kind of go through that extra step of basically figuring out how to replicate that feeling within us kind of. Like there yeah, that's actually, that's a great way to put it. Some logic to it. Yeah, it's it's there's probably like a feeling uh like you know eight slot background that like kind of pops out at us in somewhere in our psyche but like unless we have like a, a a tag or like a way to describe that it makes us really uncomfortable i think like i can't just be okay with something just because i like it i have to know like what is it <laughs> and then where else can i find it and then i'll compare those this is maybe any but i'll compare that with those things and then if i like them all then i go okay i officially like metal music or something like I have to really there, there's a there's a very like uh, structured organization process that has to run through like a filter to get to that point. I or feel like I've gotten in a lot of arguments on account of this. I feel like a lot of times pick, picking up picking those component parts apart sort of kills something of <laughs> like in the thing that that I enjoy. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to bring up is that a huge component of liking something is the the S uh, our sensory because it could just be an aesthetic um, liking and not necessarily like an FI liking and SE as well as it's like looking at all of the different things on the spectrum and saying okay this is the best not necessarily I like it it's the best one therefore I like it or whatever it's like you're building up to liking something it's just it's not the default. Yeah, and I think you make a good point there with like the aesthetic reason, because as I mentioned earlier with like video game characters, I think the one that looks the coolest or like has right. a personality that I think is attractive. And I think you're right that maybe there is some like hidden SE desire down there. Like, all right, you got to pick the one that looks cool. I absolutely think there's like an S component because like just Asura using your video game fighting character example, like I, I'll pick the one that like I reminds me or I think will play like a character I've played in other video games or something like it's the SI is even the third slot is still making itself known in that kind of situation where I have a choice. That is so cool. And Dominic? In that example, um, I think I won't even think about which character I would choose. I would just pick the first one that I see. I. I wouldn't care about it, I think, because there's there's obviously no reason why one or other uh, character would be better than the other one. So there's no reason to, to start thinking about it. I wonder if it's more common for TI doms to go like, I don't mind, whatever. I like, think it is. Yeah. I would say, yeah, the INTP is probably a little bit more likely, like Josh was saying, to even have like a personal attachment to like a certain kind of character just because of like the SI or something. But I would say 
I understand Dominic's perspective where like, it's just, uh, I've never played this before or I've never played anything like this before. So I might as well just freaking pick one at random and then just figure it out as I play it and get good at it. Like, yeah, if I'm in a situation, games or otherwise, where it's like I don't have any like basis, my NE doesn't have anything to go off, my SI doesn't go off anything, I'll probably just default back down to my FE and just say, I don't know, just like suggest something and then I'll just figure it out afterwards. Like, I, I have to have some kind of context before I can really make a decision about everything. I think it's funny that you mentioned like you'll ask somebody else like what they recommend. Um, one of my friends, he's an INTP, gets really mad at me because I never listen to his recommendations ever like it like once a year he'll recommend something for to me and i'll try it and for me it's because i to me it's really hard to just be recommended something if it doesn't attach to me personally you know and i don't seek recommendations from other people i have to kind of jump in and start to figure it out on my own and i don't know if maybe that's just an fi thing where if it doesn't have that immediate personal attachment i'm not going to want to try it whereas fe is more willing to say somebody i know or trust has tried it I will say that maybe it's different in the realm of TE, where if somebody recommends something like practical or useful to me, I'll be like, oh, okay, I can integrate that. Um, but if it's if it's on that personal level, it's a lot harder for me to want to take those suggestions. Mm -hmm. I feel like P's in general are a lot more comfortable with being like living in the unknown, right? So that's probably why I'm, I'm okay having information in my head that doesn't link with anything. I just have to know it's like, it's not linked into the structure. It's kind of on its own. That's probably like, moving it to any or something like that? For me, it's not that I don't like the unknown. It's that I tend to like it so much that I need to know. Like I have to figure out what's going on. Um, and I think you can see this when you contrast like STJs and NTJs, because STJs often have more of that fear of the unknown yeah. with the lower intuition, whereas NTJs kind of thrive in that, but they, they organize it. They say, okay, I need to find what's unknown and turn it into something that can be known instead yeah. of trying to kind of you know, avoid that situation altogether and protect. Yeah. Well, can I ask, what do we mean by the unknown though? Because do we need, do we mean the unknown variable or do we mean like the metaphysical? I think that's kind of where the main difference comes in with T and T I from my understanding is like setting the parameters, um, like, like as, as a P type and a TI dominant, like I am okay operating in like many different parameters, kind of like what you're saying, Michael, like I would have an answer for both of those like ready to go, it might not be a perfect answer. Um, but then if, if someone specifies which one, then I would probably want to try to drill down and maybe that's when it looks more like TE. So I don't know, I don't even know if I know exactly, like I, I don't even, I'm not even feeling like I'd answer that because I'm not sure it's too hard for me to think on just one one channel. So Michael, to kind of clarify maybe a little bit on that thought process I was having, I actually used to get excited when it was a busy day at work because I enjoyed turning that chaos into something productive like taking the, the coal and turning it into diamonds kind of thing. I find personally that I thrive under pressure in those types of situations because I'm able to do something with that. And that's how I prefer to think about situations. Yeah, I work with the ISFJ who I feel like, now we can commiserate on all the chaos, but I feel like this person struggles more emotionally with it. Like it's really more stressful for them than it is for me. I, I kind of can just take it in my stride, but. I do see a difference there. So it, it seems as though like um, with the NI people, they're not afraid of or uncomfortable with the unknown in the same way, but it seems like they're still driven to take the unknown and turn it into the known. Like they're still kind of generally not okay with the unknown remaining that way. Yeah. I would say that like, um, it's like we, we see the simulations of, of kind of the unknown, right, to make it known. And I think the place where we'll put resistance is if we haven't figured out a way to solve the um, the potential future thing, right? So it's if it's it's not so much the fear that it's going to happen or what it could be, because it's like in our minds, we're like, we know what will probably happen or several different instances of what will happen, but we want to make sure that we're prepared for those that when they become real, that they've been taken care of and like articulated. I think it's when we know that we haven't prepared like the way that we want to, that that's where that fear comes is because like we know what's coming up, you know? When I think of the unknown, I think of, I think what, what Lindsay's referring to, which is what I, what I, what I call the unknown variable, which is the future unknown, you know, like in a situation, in a context. And then there's like, I mean, cause there's a whole other, like, I don't know, epistemological thing that you could road that you could go down with that question. 
the unknown for like NI and NTE type seems like it's like a problem. And for me, it's usually less of a problem. I don't know if that's a anything or not, but I'm more comfortable with it, I feel. I think they're talking about in the context of like fulfilling a plan. And so like there's the unknown unknown, right? The the one that they couldn't account for. And that's really what gets the NI annoyed. Yeah. So it seems like maybe there's two possible interpretations of what unknown is. I assume that we're talking about unknown unknown future variables rather than unknown in the sense of like intuitive things like the unknown unexplored informational territory. I think that's the separate thing than what we're talking about right now. Yeah, I agree. I there's, that makes sense. there's like the universal unknown that no one's touched before and it's all in our imagination versus just we don't know it yet in the, in the context. I know like yeah. Yeah, talks about the idea that like introverted intuition is looking for that kind of subjective meaning with everything it interacts with. And that's mm -hmm. why I think when they encounter something that is unknown, they have to kind of derive some sort of meaning or interpretation of it for them to be comfortable with it. They're unwilling to kind of just treat it for what it is. Uh, whereas TI maybe can rationalize it in some sense. And I just needs to have that little personal understanding of what it is like i get really excited when i'm watching movies and there's the types of things where like they don't give you a clear-cut answer or you have to like solve some sort of mystery or meaning behind the movie those things really excite me because i i enjoy attempting to find out the meaning in these things mm -hmm. this um this might get back to like ti as an identity but for me it's like i am pretty comfortable with the unknown future because i feel like i have enough frameworks that i'll come up with something when it pops up like i don't like to plan because i my my whole personality is a plan if that makes sense yeah i mean yeah. i keep seeing this thing come up where the the te users are, are are always thinking within like a certain context and like we are always like i know a lot of time when i'm talking about people talking to people about something, we can even start talking about a specific thing in a specific context, and then I'll immediately start to generalize, and they may not even realize that I'm now generalizing about this type of thing in general. And now I'm already thinking about it cross-contextually and, and generalizing about it, kind of. Well, INTJs are definitely doing that whole contextual thinking because NI is very focused in on what our goal is, and kind of everything we do fits into that. So it's very directed. Yeah, but you even see that come up with like how Michael was defining um, the unknown, right? Oh, we're talking about one variable that we don't know. Um, you know, for us, the unknown is probably like billions of different variables all floating around in the nether, you know? Yeah, and I um, I mentioned before, I have an INFJ wife, so I talked a lot with an NI dominant and I always confuse her because I'm moving on to another topic in her mind. But for me, like I'm just like circling around a topic so I can better define it and like try to figure out with TI eventually. And it always confuses her. And that's kind of what Michael was doing too. Like he was trying to set parameters and I was like thinking like, I don't even know if I can do that and still continue to like think through this question. Yeah, that is a good point. How and I will set parameters because it's trying to turn something unknown into a more like understandable type of concept and it's like when we were talking about what we opinions and what we like and don't like like i was i was sitting here like give me give me examples <laughs> you know and finally we started getting into into music but then we veered back off into the sort of general into more general territory i do like to draw those draw those boundaries um and uh conjure up some yeah some context to discuss something with them because otherwise it's just I feel just sort of adrift in the topic and I don't you want the necessarily like it yeah we have, INTJs bring it back to the practicality experience. I think being adrift in a topic is like the INTP natural state I don't know about ISTP but like that's how I feel just if I'm not like trying to do something I'm just adrift I, I kind of yeah. like that it could be even just like a like a uh, JP thing, because one of the questions I usually ask in my sessions is something along the lines of when you're having a conversation with someone, how quickly do you want to get to the point? Or are you more comfortable with allowing the conversation to just unfold over time? And P types, I feel, are usually far more comfortable just kind of talking about things and letting it go and switching from one topic to a, you know, topic that's near it. Whereas the J's are usually like, we'll finish this topic. And then if we have time, we'll go to the next one and then so forth and so forth. Yeah, like we want to First of all, we are TE. We have we have things we need to get done. So there's an element of hurry, so I can be active and do this and this and this on my to do list. That's very 
pretty dominant from a daily on a daily basis. And then there's also the whole NI planning. We want to see what's coming next. I agree with perceivers. What they show to the outer world is their NE so or the SE, and they'll be more exploratory as a result of that. So they'll be more comfortable changing and switching from topics because of that. While with judges, they tend they tend to be more like because they show their TE or FE to the outer world. They're more structured in general with how they approach conversational topics. Yeah. Yeah, like to a certain degree, I don't even know if I understand the idea of a topic in a conversation. Like, I mean, I can like figure, I can look it up and figure it out. But like, when people tell me I changed the subject, it's so, I don't even realize it's happening personally. That's fascinating. Wow. Interesting. Little insight there. Yeah, my IJ wife pretty much says like she doesn't understand what I mean by that either. And I'm like, well, I don't understand what you mean by like I've changed topics already. Like it's, <laughs> I don't know, everything's related. So it's weird. To me. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely a, a, when the topic at hand, there's definitely a con context and a framework for sure with that, with me. You know, with PE versus PI, it's very much like condensing versus expanding for the introverted perceiving. So like, all right, let's kind of really narrow down. And the extroverted perceiving types are like, well, we can start there and move outwards to something, you know, larger. Yes. Well, it's, it's like you guys, you guys are like, I don't know how to explain it. Like you're used to building new frameworks a as you come upon things like really quickly from the ground up. Whereas we have been working on the same framework the whole time. So you can make a new one for each new context, basically. Exactly. Yeah. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll make, six barely functional houses and y'all have like one really nice one <laughs> like it's just it's never going to be done though yeah <laughs> always improving i'm thinking of an example because i, I had a conversation recently with uh this was this was at work and it was a guy i work with who's a very stereotypical intp we work at, i love the guy we work great together but <laughs> we had to have a conversation where i i i, I come to it as like this is the problem we're having. This is the this is where we need to get to. And everything I want to discuss is within this scope here. And the whole conversation we're going way up here. Do you understand this? I don't care. I just just from here, like I'm I'm looking at this thing. Like these are the buttons I need to press, and we need to like A, B, C. I I honestly in the background, I don't care. <laughs> you know, his mind. But, sees a connection between what you're thinking and what you know that's why what josh was saying i think was like i don't even realize i'm doing it i couldn't i, I that was kind of a, a eureka where i was like oh you don't really <laughs> because we're aware yeah we must drive you crazy in certain ways though too if we're trying to confine you to that like narrow band of things that you know need think, to get yeah, done confining is how it feels like when when someone tells me i'm changing the subject too often um it's like, it's not that like, it sounds, it seems like maybe like INTJs have like multiple frameworks and they're kind of like in folders. <laughs> this is just how I visualize my own brain. Whereas mine's like one really big one. And then there's like little boxes around them and I can like move between the categories, but like everything is connected to everything. So at any time, if, if you say like the code word, I might jump off into a weird direction or something that yeah. I'm not expecting, but makes sense to me. Yeah, Josh, what you just did right now is called the NE mental palace. What I've heard associated with any is like when they're when they're explaining their inner world and how they start to explain it in SI specificity. <laughs> yeah. And you did it just now. Like you gave a very specific image in your like in your SI and, and then all the any things connected to that. I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah. And Spacey, sorry. I don't feel like I have a problem with knowing when I'm changing the subject. Like I know when I'm doing it. And normally I try not to do it. Like if we're having a conversation about a specific thing, um, like I will, you know, especially I guess with people maybe who aren't any users, I will try to stay on topic and really flesh it out. Um, but a lot of the time, I think we might just feel as though if we're discussing a certain concept, whatever uh, context we're currently confining it to is causing our understanding of the concept in its entirety to, to kind of just be confined to too narrow a band to really understand most of it. And that's when I guess we feel like we'll have to kind of jump out of the context and talk about it in a more abstract way. And 
That is what I love about INTPs and ISTPs because y'all are really good about bringing us out of our little structure. And I, I really appreciate it and enjoy those conversations. Mm -hmm. I want to say, Josh, I enjoyed your, your multiple folder analogy there because I know that's something that I have struggled with when I'm having conversations with people. If people switch the topic and it's not even something that I feel is like as related as it should be, I, it's almost like my brain freezes for a second. It's like, okay, wait, I have to back out you know, process, switch to the other folder, open that up, figure out what we're talking about. Whereas maybe you guys just have an easier time flipping through all the, the papers in one. Yeah, that's our related, NI. Yeah. It's hard for our and for us to get out of our NI and come back down. I feel like it's the, I, I, I relate to that with my NI. Cool. Yeah, and I feel like what's in my folders, like they, they contradict one another. So I'm sort of, if I if I have to jump folders, maybe I'm in a different, if different frame where like things mean something different or there are different conclusions to draw from something. So I'll have that. Yeah. You said, Chris, that you'll freeze up for a second. I'll, I'll <laughs> freeze up for, for a while, you know, in those situations. Elijah, oh, Lindsay has a really good analogy that I love where she talks about how with our NI, and this would go with INFJs as well. Our framework is out in the ether as someone else used that term the other day. And so all of our function, all of our understanding is, is outside way above us in our head somewhere and um so to switch out of that takes a lot of mental energy it's not it's like uh, lindsay's analogy is like we're up in a spaceship up in the sky and to switch the topic we have to come back down to earth get out jump into another spaceship go back you know or kind of just completely change our entire framework and that just takes time and energy so we can kind of be resistant to that but I mean, we can do it obviously, but it just, it's not an instantaneous thing like with NE. All right, that is super interesting. And Dominic? Um, yeah, I would say that the ISCP, or at least I would uh, be somewhere in the middle between the INTJs and the INTPs. Um, because in a conversation, I would change the topic if I think that yeah, the subject I'm, that I'm bringing the the conversation too is uh, necessarily or uh, important for the thing that we are talking about. For uh, example, Michael, as you said, um, when you talk to your INTP friend and you just wanted to talk about the small thing, you know, maybe a decision you want to to make or something like that, I would um, yeah question your the goal you want to want to achieve and then. The, the topic has to change because that is uh, because there's something uh, other necessary to to understand or to make that decision i would i would change the topic but um yeah i i think yeah i don't know something that uh, kind of what you're saying there dominic something i'm curious with the istps the sensing people here the representatives like, do you guys like think of like topics and conversation the way that like we're talking about it? Or do you guys just more like, are you more reactionary? That's kind of my theory of how I would assume SE would manifest. I would reactionary. Yeah, I would, I would uh, call myself uh, very reactionary, but um, yeah, I, I would get uh, bothered if, if people change the conversation to something that has nothing to do with what we were um originally uh, talking about if i don't see a connection to to the to the to the main thing we are talking about but yeah as i said i think we are somewhere in the middle because our and i is in the middle universal interface with se <laughs> <laughs> that's really fascinating and so any last points y'all want to make before we close up the panel well i do feel like the isdp has drifted off a bit over the past several minutes and I, I am curious about exploring that in some manner but i don't know um, why well I, I could tell you how i see any a little bit i think i think any also se will change will keep the same uh concept and just keep changing the example around and i've had any dom saying like is that the same concept yeah it's the same concept like no those are two different concepts like no no no, no it's the same concept like for for any doms, they're, they're, they have trouble seeing that it's the same concept. It, it looks like different concepts. Um, and so we'll give different examples of the same concept and it'll seem like we're also changing the subject to them because it's a new example. Um, and so just to blow that up a little bit more is like also 
what I see any any not only is connecting it to other concepts that sort of can shed more perspective on what you're talking about. Because like I think your goal is to get as much perspective before you can get to a conclusion. And so channeling to more and more perspectives. But then also like if what we're talking about sheds a perspective on something else, then that's fair game too. That might be like a TI overlap there. Yeah. With ISTPs, because that's yeah, I, I relate to that, but I don't like take the example standpoint as often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. And so thank you so much, everyone, for, for coming out. <laughs> I really appreciate y'all taking time out of your day to discuss the differences between all three of these types and like to how to disting- distinguish the TI DOM from the INTJ. I feel like this was really helpful to people who may have taken a test and may have gotten an INTJ, but may not actually be an INTJ. <laughs> yeah. And I really appreciated hearing all of your points. Thank you, all you YouTubers, for coming out and explaining your perspective. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Zero Psych, Chris, Benjamin, Michael from Countertype, Holly from Sustainable Living, and Spacey and Vazaroth. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate it all. And your, your channels are really fun to watch. And I'll link them below as well. I really enjoy all the type content y'all put out Uh, and just being my friend. I enjoy friendship too. So that's, (laughs) yeah. And yeah, I I feel like the community, like we're able, when we, when we talk with each other like this, we're able to build a community of communication among type people who love type. And I feel like we really help share our knowledge with each other and i feel like it's it's an invaluable knowledge sharing session whenever we get to gather because we've all been studying this for a very long time so when all our minds come together maybe we're able to come to more and more realizations as as we're all gathering together you know kind of testing our thinking against each other you know in good (laughs) nt fashion just nt (laughs) yeah like a little think tank for mbti Yeah, it's like an MBTI think tank, and it wouldn't be possible without all of your lovely minds. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you, Joyce. It wouldn't be possible without you. Yeah, thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thanks for putting us together, Joyce. It was fun. I always appreciate coming on to talk about this, because I don't get a chance to talk too much about type in, like, my everyday life, so it's kind of a nice outlet. fascinated how you can organize this many people into two-hour calls every single week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how she does it. Twice a week, sometimes, it seems like, right? Yeah. I outsourced yeah. organizing game night on my Discord server. I was just <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Practicing that FE, trying to get the collapse and communication among everyone and getting them to get along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone for making this possible. Um, I appreciate all of your channels. Everyone go check it out. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>